Hello and uh, good afternoon to everyone. Thank you very much for attending uh, this webinar. This is a new webinar in our series, an ongoing series of events that we will deliver to our user base through this medium. The agenda for today concentrates on the recent release of LUSAS version 15.1. It features some technical present, uh, presentation sessions from one of my colleagues and we'll discuss the future um, of the product to give you an idea of, uh, of where the system is heading. I'd like to introduce you to the team today. My name is Philip Ike. I am the Regional Manager for Europe and South America. Uh, we are also joined by Stuart Morrison, the Regional Manager for Rest of World. Hi, I'm going to be um, Julian Moses. I'm going to be looking after the technical sessions today. And also in organizing this event, um, Paul Bellchamber, uh, who's been looking after our, our marketing support. Once we go through this event, we would encourage your feedback. You can do this in two ways. One is to enter your questions into the, um, the question box in your GoToWebinar panel. The other is that you can send an email to us during the event or latterly on the webinars at lusas.com email address. We will do our best to answer questions whilst we go through this. We have almost 200 of you online, um, so it's unrealistic that we're going to be able to answer everybody's question during the event. We will come back to you uh, in the near future, those that we can't answer directly. So what does uh, LUSAS 15.1 bring to you? It's a broad development. Uh, there are many items that we will not be covering in any detail today. We're concentrating on three principal areas. Number one is the improvement to reporting from LUSAS. So this is an update to the existing report generator. We then move on to a new facility to assist in staged construction. And we end on a presentation of improvements to ease of use and particularly the implementation of new design facilities within the software. And those are presented against a backdrop of the existing facilities for design that were released in version 15.0. For the improved report generation, the theme for the uh, this particular release with the report generator is the ability to automatically update the document um, in everything that you insert into it that's coming from the LUSAS model. So we can now within the product save a view with a particular name. Julian will be showing this in detail a little bit later. Any view that is attached to the report will auto update. You can also freeze it, um, but the critical thing is any any graphical view of your structure um, will update inside the report. This is the same for graphs. We also have a new facility in the software called One Click Report, uh, which I'll show you in some more detail in a moment. All of these items update into the report generator. With this update as well, we've inserted some new icons into the software, and these assist you with building the report and um, updating it. One-click member reporting is something that's entirely new. So the idea here is that you can click on a single or a group of members and get a report which summarizes to you both input data and results information in a very handy, easy to view format. This format is based on a template. The template can be edited. Okay, at this point I'm going to hand over to Julian and he'll take you through some of these specific facilities. Okay, we're going to use this simple integral bridge to look at some of the new updating report facilities in 15.1. Now to start with, I'm basically going to load my results up. I'm going to switch off the fleshing and I'm just going to rotate the model around to set up a, a 3D view. And I'm going to save that 3D view. So if I go to Window Menu, Save View, I'm going to title this uh, my 3D view. Now, when I save this view, it will save all the graphic settings you currently see on the screen, including how the layers are set. 
So, okay, that the save view is saved here in the utilities tab in the tree view. I'm going to hit the home button to look down on plan. I'm going to go to my layers, switch off my diagrams, and I'm just going to move this slightly. And I'm going to now save this view again. So I'm going to call this my plan view. And again, this is saved into tree view here. So I've got two views in the tree view. Now, if I drag on my 3D view onto the screen, you'll see it returns to the settings I had when I saved that view. If I drag on the plan view, it does the same. I can go to my load case tab, change a load case, and again, I can drag on my 3D views. So it's very easy to set up a certain view and then compare across multiple load cases. Now I'm just going to set back the low case one. Okay, I'm going to look at some of the other enhanced facilities in 15.1. Now I'm going to uh, hit the home button, I'm going to go to utilities, and I'm going to use the graph through 2D. Now we've always had graph through 2D in the software, but what I'm going to do is drag a line from abutment to abutment, and I'm going to do a graph. But here I can now select which load cases I want the graph to be of. Now to start with, I'm going to leave this as a shell moment, and I'm going to look at the component. I've got to select something here. Now under the extent, do I want to graph the whole model, or in this case, I actually want to just graph one of the groups called deck. So okay, that next. So Thick shell NX. I'm going to title these up, so I'm going to call this uh, distance and that moment. And I'm going to hit finish. So there's my graph for that particular load case. Now, in previous versions of the software, if I close this graph down, I would have lost. here in the Utilities tab in the tree view. So if I double click on it, I get my graph back without having to go back through the graph wizard. But also, I can right hand mouse button on that graph and edit it. Now when I set this graph up initially, I was just looking at the active load case. I'm now going to look at all load cases. And what this will do is build a graph of thick shell MX but it will use all the load cases. So each of these lines represents a different load case in my model. If I maximize it, here are the load cases I'm slicing through. Now I'm just going to close that down. Now the graph is still saved here in the tree view. But this time I want to create a second graph along the I can copy, I can then paste. So I've got a copy of the graph, which I'm going to rename. So I'm just going to call this graph two. Now on graph two, I'm basically going to edit it. So edit. So I'm going to do a graph of all load cases, but this time rather than look at the component MX, I'm going to look at the component MY. So there's my second graph along the same line, but looking at a different component. Again, these are going to be saved, and I'm going to use them in a report later on. Another enhanced facility in version 15.1 is the print result wizard. So utilities. Go to selected. I can choose to look at individual load cases. I'm actually just going to look at all load cases. And I'm going to look at the nodal displacement. So displacement, nodal, and if I finish, what I get is for each load case in my model, a table showing me the nodal displacements. Now, in here, you can see a lot of these numbers are very, very small. Now, new in version 15.1, if I go to the properties box here, I can set a threshold value for these numbers. So I'm going to set a value of 1e minus 5. And what that will do is show the very small numbers as 0. So it's much easier to pick up. and all their load cases. Now again, if I cancel this in previous versions, I would have lost that 
But in now in 15.1, that print results table is stored here. So if I double click, it recreates that table for me without having to go back through the print result wizard. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to now look at a three-dimensional view of the structure. And I'm going to switch back on my geometry layer. OK, now at the moment, I'm looking at the bending moments on the shells and the bending moments in the pile. But if I was designing this pile here, what I would actually want to do is look at the bending moments and the shears and all the other effects on the pile. Now, to do that currently, I would have to use the diagrams layer and look at the different diagram components. However, new in version 15.1 is the one-click report facility. So I've selected that line. I'm going to click on the one-click report. And what I will get is a summary page, a one-page report, showing me all the engineering properties that the line has, but also the design effects. So I can see both the moments and the shears for, for that particular load case. Now, this one-click report can be printed out, or it can be saved into the LUSAS report. So I'm going to add to reports. Now, currently, I don't have a report, so I'm going to set one up. I'm just going to call this bridge model. I'm going to leave the units and the number of decimal places the same, and OK, that's. And I'm going to add my one-click report to my LUSAS report. I'm also going to take the surface that the deck is, so I'm going to select that, and I'm going to do a one-click report on the surface. Now, when you do a surface model like this, what you get is a little thumbnail showing you the effects that you're seeing, including the max and min values. Now, these uh, thumbnails are quite small, but when you print it out, you can actually see the max min values, so it's a nice way of summarizing the effects on a particular item you're looking at. OK, I'm going to add this to the report. So I've now got my two one-click reports into the report there. So let me have a look at those. If I view them, I will see them in the LUSAS report. Taking a few seconds just to load up the reporting facility. So if I now scroll through this, you can see my summary reports there. Now, obviously, this uh, report that we're looking at could be printed out or it could be saved as PDF. But I'm actually going to close it down because what I want to do is add to the LUSAS report. So I'm going to add a chapter. Now, we've always been able to add model properties or basic results. But new in version 15.1, I can add the saved views and the graphs. So I'm going to add the saved views. And I'm going to look at both saved views. Down here, I can choose whether I'm looking at the active load case, or in this case, I'm going to look at all load cases. So those have now been added to my LUSAS reports. I'm also going to add the graphs that I created. So I'm going to add both the graphs. Now, notice there's no load case selector here, because the load cases are part of the definition of the graph themselves. So there's my reports. So if I now view this. I will get a LUSAS report that includes the one-click reports, the saved views, and the graphs. This is just coming onto the screen now. OK, it's just about to appear. OK, so if I then scroll through this, you'll see my one-click reports. Those are my saved views. And at the back, I have my graphs. Now, again, I'm just going to close this down. Now, the real power of the auto-updating facilities in version 15.1 is if you make a change to your model. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this abutment here, and I'm going to move it in the x direction. So moving it by minus 9. Now, what this will do is shorten the, the deck span. You can see that's happened there. Now, the results have disappeared because I need to rerun. So if I resolve this, I will update my re results. Now, if you were doing this in version 15, you would have to think about going to rebuild your report now. But in 15.1, all I have to do is view it. And all the graphs, the saved views, the tables of numbers will update 
based on the new model that we have on the screen now. So it's just rebuilding this. Okay, so my report is now on the screen, and if I scroll through this, you won't really see much change there, but there you can see the thumbnails have changed, and you can certainly see the saved views have updated based on the new model that I've got, and also the graphs have updated based on the new model that I've got. So now, in version 15.1, everything can be added to the reports dynamically and up. and more understanding of what's been updated in 15.1. Have a look at the what's new section in the updated help system. Okay, Julian, it's uh, Stuart here. I've been monitoring the questions. We've got uh, quite a few come in. Uh, we also noticed a couple of comments about uh, the uh, sound quality. We apologize if uh, we're not sure where that is. It's somewhere on the line. And also occasionally for Julian's note that uh, your voicing sometimes is coming in before the slide change, but uh, just a, a point to note. Anyway, a couple of quick questions. Uh, you've been selecting single items. What happens, Julian, if you actually select multiple lines in the one point clicking? What actually happens? With that pile. Yeah. If I'd have selected the four piles, what I would get is a one click report for each of the lines in turn. So I would get four separate pages one for each of the piles I select. So however many items you select, you get a one-click report, a page summary for that one item. Oh, that sounds good. And quick one, second question, can we customize the reports, headers, and footers? Yeah, in the LUSAS report, you'll notice there's a, there's a LUSAS uh, bitmap in the top. Those can be customized, so you don't have to stick with the standard templates uh, that we supply. You can actually customize that and make it look and feel how you want to. Okay, thank you. Um, we'll move then on to the next part of the presentation. Um, this is a completely new facility titled Construction Table Reporting. Um, it is valuable in both construction and deconstruction analysis and can incorporate, if you want it to, time-dependent effects. So in other words, particularly for post-tension structures, you would be looking there at creep effects within the con. Concrete. The goal of the tool is to produce displacement based. So you have a history of displacements during the construction or deconstruction of your, in this case, um, bridge system. This is obviously very useful where you want to correlate site data during construction with the analytical model that you have already built in LUSAS. You can either get the displacements as absolute values, you can also get them as incremental values. And it functions as a utility to calculate the necessary pre-camber for your structure in order to create a final flat geometry. Okay, at that point I'll uh, hand over to Julian. Control table. Okay, so here's my model. Um, if I just look at it, it's a, a segmental box type structure. Um, we've got a, a number of stages in the analysis here. So if I were to look back at, at stage one here, you'll see it's just the peers and the peer head. And as we go through the analysis, you'll see stages being added as we add segments. And obviously the last stage is where the whole structure is constructed. Now before I um, actually look at the construction control table, I just want to look at a couple of the other engineering properties, the attributes in this model. Uh, and first I want to talk about the thick beams. So if I look at the thick beams, we're using thick beams and these are the BMI 21s. Now these were introduced into the system in version 15 as well as their quadratic equivalent, the BMI 31s. Now, when these were first introduced, they had limited nonlinear capability. But now in version 15.1, one 
these elements fully support material and geometric nonlinearity. So these are now the elements that I tend to use for nonlinear modeling problems. Okay, if I close that down, I also want to look at the deactive control. And again, just to talk about some of the features that were entered into in version 15. So here, the inactive line control basically controls the deactive elements before they are activated. Now, we have fixed control. This is where the ends of the deactive element is kept in its original position. Now, fixed probably wouldn't be that useful for this model, but in certain circumstances, it is useful. Horizontal is where the deactive elements are basically kept horizontal before they're activated. And I would typically refer to this as hinged cast. Or we have tangent. Now, tangent is where the next segment it is added tangentially to the model. So I would refer to this as matched cast. And that's what this model has used. So if I close this down, I'm going to load up my results. And there you can see the bending moment diagram for the final stage. Now, if I go to stage one and set active the final increment of stage one, you'll see some bending moments. And I can then go through this model. Now, the reason we've got increments in this model is we're actually looking at a nonlinear creep analysis for this analysis. Now, rather than me just setting active each of the segments individually, I'm going to go to the animation wizard. Now, this has been enhanced in Vision 15.1 as well. It's been uh, made faster, but it also allows me to choose low history. And here I can look at the final increments of all my stages. I can also now select the size of the animation I want to create. OK, so there's my animation. And if I use the controls down here, I can slow it down. So this is a nice way of getting a, a, a global picture of what the analysis is doing. Now, obviously, I could save this as an AVI, but today I'm just going to close it down. Because I actually want to talk about the uh, construction control table now. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to close down my bending moment diagram. And I'm going to select the points in the model. Now, to do that, I'm going to hold the P key down to select those points. Now, you can see that I've renumbered these points 1 to 15 and 101 to 115. That's so when I'm looking at the construction control table, I know where the points are in terms of the analysis. So if I go to the bridge construction control table, this is the construction control table facility. And it allows me to do three types of reports. A, a Canva table report, where it targets a certain stage. A displacement history report, or an incremental displacement report. Now, I'm going to actually look at a Canva table, and I'm going to target stage 27. Now, down here, I can choose whether to look at the whole analysis or selective load cases. I'm going to look at the whole analysis. Now, if I OK that, what the Canva, the construction control table gives me for a Canva table is the how I would have to set the construction drawings such that I achieve a zero flat structure at the end of my uh, construction. Now, if we just look at, say, point three here, we've got this number here. Now, this is the number that I would have to lift the end of segment with point three at the end of it so that I achieve a zero value at the end of the whole construction. Now, at the moment, can you see here I've got lots of significant figures. I'm going to go to the Properties tab, and I'm actually going to change the number of decimal places, and I'm just going to go to three decimal places. OK, so there, point three would have to be It basically is flat and at zero. Cantilever. Now, what this is telling me is I would have to actually place that on the construction drawing 497 millimeters above the datum, or zero, such that at the end of the analysis, it gives me a zero value on my structure. So when I've targeted 20, stage 27, what it's basically calculating is the pre-canva I need to add to the drawings 
such that I end up with a zero value at the end of the analysis model. So that's the uh, Canva table. I'm just going to close that down and I'm going to go back and do an incremental displacement history. So Now this is showing me sort of different numbers, but these numbers are very useful as well because this is showing me the movement at the ends of the segments as the construction progresses. So these are the values I can typically go out on site and measure, and I can then check the analysis model and the construction are progressing as I predicted from the analysis model. So it's showing me the difference in the movements between every stage. And again, that's useful for monitoring um, how the construction is progressing out on site. So that's the construction control table. OK, uh, thank you for Julian uh, for that one. We've got slightly related. I think you mentioned the word the FIP. We also have the Eurocode creep, and we have the Chinese uh, creep codes in there at the moment. OK, in fact, there's a good question here. It's actually linking your first presentation to your second one. Can the construction table go into the report? It can, but at the moment it's saved as a, a text, a rich text format. But I can put that rich text format into the LUSAS report. OK, another question. I uh, used one-click reporting for user-definable results. Yeah, as um, Phil mentioned, um, we supply a template, and that template has a number of components that we've identified. However, that template can be edited. So if you want to change what is being displayed in any of the cells, that is possible to do. Good, on that one. And I'm uh, not sure we've got time for another one. Hopefully, guys... No, okay, I think we need to move on. Time's up short. Uh, back to Phil. Thank you, Stuart. So, moving on, um, we're now going to discuss uh, a development which is um, all encompassing. to this. Version 15.0 was a major release, came to you as users last year. Within that, we had a variety of code-based updates in the, uh, the release. The vehicle load optimizer was entirely new. This was released as a replacement to the pre-existent autoloader facility. We enhanced and updated our concrete creep and shrinkage, and Julian has mentioned some of the new codes that uh, we already observe in that facility. Creep, of course, is part of pre-stress and post-tensioning, and the wizards um, are available, again, to a variety of codes of practice. And then on the sectional design, we updated the previous British standard slab designer to allow both Ashto and Eurocode designs to be done within the software. Finally, we released an entirely new product, which is the steel and composite deck designer. This, at the moment, is to Eurocode 4, um, but again, we will look at uh, additional codes in that facility. So that's what we have at the moment. Looking to version 15.1, we have more utilities in here that assist you um, in the design process. The first one is most relevant probably to building structures. Um, so generally when you're looking at um, floor loading, uh, you often will not want to model your floor structurally. You will model it with your analysis as a rigid diaphragm. That rigid diaphragm then needs a way of dispersing the floor loads to the boundary members. And this new version of Loose House has a very a rich set of facilities um, for how those loads are dispersed, either with simple trapezoidal load forms, or indeed you can split them up internally um, as if you had internal partitions inside each cell. So that's entirely new. Um, we've tidied up some of the results, or indeed extended the facilities, 
particularly for envelopes and smart combinations. So here, previously, you could look at maximum only, you could look at minimum only. What you can now do is you can see both of these. So in other words, you can see an extreme set of values in a single plot. So it's a great rationalization of what we previously had. And for sophisticated or geometrically complex structures, it greatly simplifies the viewing of your results. Also towards the uh, building design implementation, although it can be useful in other structures as well, is the inclusion of um, rigid zones. So this is where, as a designer, you will not be designing um, the area of the members that are included in the connection. And analytically, you want that part of the structure to be entirely rigid, in other words, locked. And LUSAS uses uh, an automated approach to calculate this rigid section, if you want to use it. You can also customize how that rigid zone is defined. For those of you that have not used our user-defined results, I strongly recommend you to have a look at the facility. It's a, um, a very flexible tool um, for post-processing your results. Version 15.1 has extended that functionality, so we have more tools within user-defined results um, for essentially getting into deeper parameters from, say, cross-sections um, and getting information such as member lengths. All of this is with the final goal of using that infrastructure to deliver another entirely new facility in LUSAS, which is the steel member designer. This is currently in development. We have a prototype for it. The prototype results can be seen on the screen. Um, so here we have a report which has been generated. And I'm sure you'll all be very pleased to see the format of this. So we declare um, the formula for each clause check from the code of practice, substitute the values, and then create or deliver the results. You can either look at the results in this um, report, or you can view the information graphically on your model. And this is seen as a pass-fail display, either for parts of a member um, or for overall members, to give you a, a quick feel for pass-fail in your steel structure. OK, Julian, I'll hand over to you to take us through that area of the presentation. OK, I'm going to load up a, a third model. Uh, this is going to be just a, a simple box culvert model. OK, so there's my uh, box culvert model. Uh, this line here representing uh, where the, the soil level is. So it, it's a simple buried box culvert. If I rotate it around, it's being modeled just using simple beam elements for this particular analysis. We've got some soil springs down here representing the soil. And if I look at the load case tab, we have a number of different load cases. So if I switch off the fleshing, switch on loading, set active the left wall. So we have some earth pressure on the left wall. We have some earth pressure on the right wall. And we then have some surcharge loading on the top here. We then have a series of combinations and envelopes. And if I look at the envelope, the envelope is combining the worst effects of the dead load or the various combinations to find the worst design value. OK, so let me, first of all, just go back to the dead load. And I'm going to load up my results. OK, so what we're seeing on the screen there is the, the bending moment due to the dead load. If I were to look at some of the other load cases, I would obviously look at the bending moment for that particular load case. But what I'm interested in is finding the, the max and the min results. So I'm going to go down here, set active the envelope for force moment and Z. Now, I'm just going to go to my diagrams layer. Now, this is what we would traditionally get in version 15. We would get the maximum when we set active the maximum envelope. And to look at the minimum, I would have to set active the minimum part of the envelope. But as you probably just saw, in 15.1 now, we have this facility here. So I can add the minimum 
to the maximum display. So if I OK that, what I get is the minimums being shown in blue, the maximums being shown in red onto the screen. Now if I want to, I could also just look at the extreme values. That will just show me the worst numbers in any case. But I'm going to look at max and mins. So it's now very easy using smart combinations or envelopes to look at the max min together on the screen, whereas in the past you would have to go to the uh, low case tab and actually set active the different parts, and you could never see them together. Now I'm just going to switch back on my fleshing, because at the moment, the bending moment that I'm displaying on the screen assumes we have flexible corners here. So the bending moment goes right to the end of the line. But in reality, where these uh, the wall and the roof meet here, that's going to be fairly rigid. Now, if I was doing this in uh, version 15, I would have to use something like a constraint equation to, to look at that rigid corner. But now in version 15.1, it's very easy. If I go to my thick beam, double click, now in 15, this button here was called end releases. It's now called end conditions. Now if I click on it, you'll see that I can set end releases and also rigid zones. Now I'm going to put a rigid zone into this model. Now at the moment, this is being set with zero rigid zones. Now I could specify the length of the rigid zone that I want, but in this case, I'm going to allow Lusas to calculate it. So what Lusas will do is calculate a rigid zone where the roof and the wall meet, basically, in the corners here. Now, if I OK this, OK and OK, my results disappear because I've added this new rigid zone in, so I need to recalculate them. OK, and now what you'll see is where the rigid zone is, I don't get any bending moment results, and I get this thick red line visualizing that it is a rigid zone in those areas. So the bending moment now is being calculated as if the corner is totally rigid, and it's starting from there. Now, I don't know if you noticed previously, I had a bending moment here of about 360. So just by the inclusion of the rigid zones, I get a reduction in the bending moment here that I'm looking at. So it's now very easy to set up rigid uh, connections in the corner of box culverts or in buildings. Now, if I go back to the uh, thick beam elements here, just want to talk about a couple of things. I could set up rigid zones that are different at one end of the line than the other, but in this case, we're doing the same at both ends, so the same. Under end releases, these are my beam end releases. Now, because I'm using a 2D thick beam, I've only got a rotational freedom. But notice now that I can include a joint at the end of my beam. Now, in the past, adding a joint to the end of a line was a bit fiddly. Now this has all been automated for you. So in here, I can add a joint. Now, that joint can go there at the end of the rigid zone. Or if I don't have a rigid zone, it can go at the end of the line. So now the inclusion of joints into line models has been made much simpler with this include joint facility. So that's, that's the sort of rigid zones and inserting joints into line models. OK, Julian, thank you for your time on that. Um, moving forward, um, I mentioned earlier on the, uh, the traffic load optimizer um, in LUSAS. For those of you that are online from North America, uh, you'll be happy to see that we have now includes, included the AASHTO LRFD 6th and 7th editions um, to the traffic load optimization. Similarly, we've updated to the current Canadian codes of practice. The traffic load optimizer is a much more flexible um, facility than the previous autoloader. So we would encourage um, those of you that have not yet migrated um, to, uh, to move across. Auto loader into the new traffic load optimizer. Um, most of the important codes are now there and we are working to include the additional ones in, in the near future. Um, another uh, additional facility to the traffic load optimizer 
is the ability to look at onerous results only. Um, so in other words, we're trying to rationalize here the amount of information that you're presented with facility um, that enhances that particular item. I mentioned at the beginning that version 15.1, as, as many of our releases, uh, incorporates a wide variety of new tools and updates into the system. We're not mentioning all of those today, uh, so we've concentrated on the three major areas, if you like. Um, outside those, coming back to ease of use, we have a new particularly for those users that are doing both linear and nonlinear analysis. So previously, if you're doing a linear analysis, say with a thick beam element, and you wanted to run a nonlinear analysis, you had to choose a nonlinear thick beam. This is no longer the case. You have a new family of elements which take you, uh, which allow you to perform both types of analysis with a single element. So the If you see that the software is becoming more efficient in processing, it's becoming quicker. We have more graphic speed ups um, within this particular release. And finally, hysteretic joints. Many of you greatly appreciated in version 15.0 the release of our soil joint. The soil joint was one of a family of what we called piecewise linear joints. And uh, that facility has now been extended to allow hysteresis. Hysteresis obviously is particularly valid for seismic type analyses, but in fact any analysis where there is loading and unloading of your structure, this can be used for. So potentially it could be of benefit as well in seasonal loading and unloading of bridge structures. With what we show you today, if you want to remind yourself of some of the facilities or learn more about them, please do look at our help system. When you start LUSAS by default, a dialogue will come up uh, presenting you with uh, what's new, uh, which you should browse. You can also follow the hyperlink, uh, which is on the screen. here. LUSAS documentation has also been updated. Um, the major item here is for the uh, new EC4 composite deck designer. Uh, with each release, we look to rework our tutorial examples. Many of you online are experienced users. If you are bringing into, um, uh, into your organizations new users to LUSAS, we would encourage you to look at the tutorial examples inside the software. We spend considerable time developing those. They are clearly defined, simple step-by-step -step guides towards uh, certain structure types, how to create them, analyze them, and assess the results. Software customization. Um, for those of you that aren't aware, uh, as well as hopefully all the fine tools that you appreciate within LUSAS that we, uh, we implement with each release, you can also customize the software to your own needs. Some of this will just be using what we already do in LUSAS, um, but just putting facilities into a loop. For instance, if you want to redo a certain operation, making differences between each loop. So an example here would be creating a multi-span bridge, such as what you can see on the screen here, where essentially one span is very similar to the other, but there are certain parametric differences. So if you have large structures which are potentially costly in time of model building, do consider the use of the LUSAS programmable interface to make that job easier. If you need assistance with that, our support team can help you. And indeed, our consultants can also help Um, we got some examples on screen here from some of our user base of dialogues and wizards that they have created within the software. So for those of you that are familiar with um, languages such as uh, Visual Basic, DBNet, Java, Python, and many others, um, if you have that experience or you have others in your organization that do, do consider taking advantage of them. It could be a, a great cost benefit to you in the work that you're performing. 
Okay, just before moving on, I'm just going to hand back to my colleague, just so I think we have some more questions. At this yeah, point. one sort of like a quite pertinent question. Are we actually recording these webinars? Uh, well, we hope so. Uh, sometimes technology does let us down, but the idea is that we are recording what we've been talking about today, and we'll probably be putting them up on our website. Uh, we'll give you more information on that into the future. Uh, but uh, yes, the answer, yes, hopefully you'll be able to view them again and share them with your colleagues. Okay, thank you, and thank, please do keep the queries coming in. We'll uh, we'll keep uh, going through those as this progresses. Um, to note as well, not only do we provide software to the industry, um, but we also have a consulting team. Some of you are aware of this, and we've got um, some of the more well-known structures that we've been involved in online here. Um, one of which is the, um, the cable car from, uh, from the Olympic bid. Um, so we can get involved in projects either in a holistic way, so we can completely take on the analysis, design, and the modeling uh, from you as a client, or you can bring us in just to act as one of your staff to help relieve you in times of, uh, of great pressure. Um, so if you are extremely busy with your work, and we know it's, it's good news for the construction industry in general, um, in the UK and with our partners around the world, many of whom are, are online for this presentation, construction is buoyant. It's difficult to find good engineers. If you need experts to help you, please do get, uh, get in contact with us, and uh, we would be delighted to assist you in some of the projects that you are getting involved in. Stuart just mentioned earlier on, um, can you watch the sessions again? Uh, yeah, the answer is yes. Um, so these should go up onto our website fairly shortly after this presentation. Um, I would also mention it's not listed on here, but uh, we also now have a YouTube channel. Um, we will actually send through with, um, after this presentation, the link to that, so as you can find your way onto it. Please do promote that within your organization. It's something that we're extending. We have further events as well coming um, to you fairly shortly. In fact, in the next two or three weeks, uh, well, in the next few days, you'll be getting an invitation to a EC4 webinar. So that's the Steel and Composite Deck Designer. Um, and uh, we look forward to seeing many of you online again for that event. For events beyond that, we would like to be guided to you on the content that you would like to see. When we make a new release, it's a very obvious time for us to make a presentation to our user base. Things have changed, and um, we're happy to share uh, the information on those changes with you. If you have ideas um, about technical content, which is maybe not related to an individual release, that you think would be valuable to see in a webinar and that you think the rest of the industry would value, please do share that with us. We would like to continue these webinars as a series um, to continue to develop our uh, connections with you um, and help you with your use of our products. Questions, as I mentioned, um, please keep them coming in. The lines will stay open for a little while after this event. Um, you can also email us on webinars at um, So we look forward to hearing from you. We will also be sending out questionnaires. Uh, if you would like to respond to those questionnaires, again, that would be much appreciated. Um, your feedback is extremely valuable to us and shapes the software that you see in the future. Uh, so please do participate. Um, it helps move LUSAS in a good direction in the future. Thanks once again for your time um, from all of us. Thank you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> and uh, we look forward to seeing you online again in a future event. Thank you, and at this point we will close out. <laughs>